Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasia, I am your host, and today I'm going to tell you a weird story of how I ended up getting a fish in my fish room that I've never owned before, I've never purchased before, and I never even thought about or planned on getting, and yet it just almost magically appeared in my fish room, and I'm going to tell you how it happened. So without further ado, let's get started! Do you guys remember when I bred the Brevis Sunspot cichlids, which are shell dwellers? They have little squishy faces and they kind of look like bulldogs. I will link the species spotlight for them down in the description below if you're interested. But they were cool fish and I ended up selling the breeding colony at one of the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association fish swaps to new homes. And I still kept a lot of the fry so I can grow them out and then sell them at future Greater Chicago Cichlid Association swaps as well. So I ended up in that 20 gallon tall catching all the fry and moving them over to a smaller grow out tank where it'll be a lot easier to feed them and then that particular tank I ended up just kind of leaving it alone and chucking a bunch of random plants that I would acquire so it became my temporary plant holding tank. There was a variety of different plants in there. I also ended up receiving a couple plants as a gift uh, for participating in the Aquashella aquascaping competition. So I got a little few of those, but as I was coming from Florida, we, since we flew, I didn't want to try to take the plants on a plane. So I asked Joanna from the small scape to take the plants with her and then give them to me the next time she had a chance. So she took them on a little journey all the way from Florida back to Illinois she ended up putting all those plants in one of her tanks. So fast forward, eventually I ended up getting those plants back and I put them in the 40 gallon tall as part, you know, because it was my little holding tank, right, for plants. Because I do have a tank that I want to escape now, I was just holding off and I wasn't ready to escape it just yet, so I needed the plants to kind of hang out somewhere in the meantime. Now keep in mind that that 20 gallon tall was a tank where I had all the Brevis babies in there. So over time, as I would kind of peer into that tank, I would see a tiny little fish swim around and I just assumed that, oh, I missed one Brevis, but because it's got some nice algae growing in there, it's got a ton of plants, it's got some shrimp breeding in there, that little guy will find enough food to sustain himself. It's a large tank that is very mature, so there's enough to sustain it so it can grow, so I don't have to really worry about it. And then uh, when it's time to take out the plants, I'll fish the guy, little guy out and put him back with his siblings in the little grow out tank. Well, that time became now, be well, more so yesterday, because I it was finally time to take out the plants so I can redo that tank and move the Chelinochromis cichlids that are next door into that tank. Now, the reason why I wanted to move the Chelinochromis from the 20 gallon long to the 20 gallon tall is because I tried to breed them in that tank and the setup was not really the best. Uh, they would have fry, but they would get sucked up in the filter, so they need to be in a tank with a sponge filter. And on top of that, because the gravel is black, they ended up darkening a lot, and when they had babies, it was almost impossible to see them. Because oftentimes, if fish spawn, sometimes I will catch the little babies, put them in a hang-on bat, like a hang-on a uh, little breeder box where I can raise them and feed them little baby brine shrimp and make sure they get all the extra food that they can grow really well. So as I was moving all the plants out of the tank, so upon taking a closer look, I realized that it was not a Brevis sunspot baby. And actually, it was a fish that I didn't recognize, which was very bizarre, because I'm aware of all the fish that go in and out of my fish room. I rotate fish from time to time as I breed, and this is a fish I've never owned before. So I looked online and tried to identify it, and then the thought occurred to me, because I didn't purchase this fish, I didn't put this in here, it was not in here when the Brevis was in here, and if it, if it was, the Brevis would have for sure eaten it. So this fish had to come into my fish room when I brought the plants over from Joanna the Smallscape, which means that there must have been some spawning happening in her tank, and as the fish deposited some eggs, one little egg got stuck to one of the plants, and then it came home here, and then it ended up hatching. So why don't we take a closer look at the little stowaway and see what kind of fish I now have in my fish room. So here is the really tiny boy or girl. I don't really know. 
if this is a male or female, but this is the tiny little fish right there, right in the middle with the orange on the fins. It's got speckling on the body. I would love to get closer footage so I can better show you, but my problem is that he is really shy. And every time I get really close to the tank, this little fish tends to hide away and I can't really film him. That's why I put out some food to see if I can try to lure him. And I'm trying to move around and see if I can focus. He's also super, super fast. So this is definitely, I think, a Danio. My first guess was a Pearl Danio, but this might be another type of Danio. And I would really, really appreciate it if you guys could try to help identify this fish for me. That would be super, super cool. Just to double check what kind it is. But this is my little, tiny, mysterious surprise fish that I'm just following around as he zooms around the tank. <laughs> He's super cute. I guess out of all the different types of fish you can be surprised with, this is a pretty good surprise. Especially because he fits right in within the community tank, so I don't have to worry. He has a home, a permanent home, because I think I'll keep him in this tank unless I end up making like a better suited community tank for his needs, then I would consider moving him, but definitely gonna keep this little surprise fish, that's for sure. Oh, there he is. I got distracted and I was looking at my tank. But there he is zooming around. So cute. but so, so fast and difficult to film, my goodness. I had better footage that I filmed with my phone, but I've had a lot of struggles this week with using phone footage uh, with Premiere Pro, which I used to edit. So we're gonna have to, this will have to do, this will have to do for now. But in the future, I'll definitely post some updates and I will definitely try to take the time to film this a bit, bit better. But overall, you can see a super cute this little tiny fish is. Look at him just zoom around all over the place. He's hanging out with the shrimp and with the tetras. I think he's just one of the tetras at this point. He's like, okay, you're my friends. I will also be a pretend honorary tetra. And the male betta has been really nice. He's been just, for the most part, ignoring him. But he's also a very nice, mellow boy. So he's a really great community fish and also Oh my god, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy and try to force that. Don't eat the whole pellet. It won't even fit in your mouth. My goodness, my goodness. So thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to come hang out with me. And be sure to subscribe to not only follow the little journey of this little guy because I'm gonna be definitely keeping him in the fish room, but I'm gonna be doing some really cool breeding projects, which I can't tell you what they are now but you'll know soon and they'll be super great and you won't want to miss them. So on that note, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.